recipe. So in order to get there, he said it's performance over outcome. It's not who we play, it's how we play. That has to be the standard. And on the first play, Book finds Javon McKinley, so they come out throwing and get about four or five yards on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, and I really think, Dave, that they're going to want to get this passing game going. As I mentioned in the open, it started to get going next week, and they need to improve upon it and get more consistent with it, and I think this is a game they'll use to do that. They go empty here on second down and seven. Book with time and completes it to the outstanding true freshman tight end Michael Mayer. Well defended, though, by David Curry of Georgia Tech, and that puts Notre Dame in third down. That's the 13th catch on the year for Mayer. They have a lot of talented weapons on the perimeter for Ian Book. A lot of tight ends. They may use five different tight ends today. We'll get into it as well. This, this has been tight end you for a number of years. So third down and two, Kyron Williams in the backfield with Book. Off play action, Book has an easy completion for a first down. Out to the 34-yard line, that's two catches already for Mayer. He had five a week ago against Pitt. And you see that rushing attack? They average 231 yards a game. They have that down. As Brian Kelly said, we're, we're running the ball well. We're stopping the run well. Now we need to evolve in the other areas. We'll get to defense, but offense, that's the passing game. And that's why you're seeing these short passes early before they get to the running game. Here comes a jet sweep to Tyree. A flag is down. Tyree into Georgia Tech territory where he fumbled the ball. Notre Dame appears to have recovered it. Good hustle by Kyron Williams downfield to cover it up. Again, a penalty marker is down. Yeah, it's coming back. That's going to be holding on Notre Dame on the initial block to break him feed that free that he cut in front of. Holding offense, ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. This could have been big at the end of the end of the play for Georgia Tech if they could have jumped on that ball. See right at the end. Good job ripping the ball out. Excellent job by Trey Swillen. That's a familiar name to you. His dad Pat played at Georgia Tech in the NFL for a whole bunch of years. Good job there, but Notre Dame gets back on the ball, keeps control, but now at first and 20. And those jerseys being worn by Georgia Tech were the jerseys worn by Trey's dad Pat when he played at Georgia Tech. So first and 20, another pass play here from Book. And he's able to hit Avery Davis, get a little bit of it back. But it's Jackson on the tackle. Yeah, we'll definitely get into the jerseys and, and how it all came to be back in the mid 80s for Georgia Tech and why they're wearing them as they have Notre Dame and a nice second and long here. Good opportunity for them. Book back to throw again here and is able to step up and cut down at the 34 yard line. Bring it up third down. We welcome you, those of you who just watched number one Clemson escape against Boston College. Clemson plays Notre Dame next week. Along with former Fighting Irish defensive lineman Mike Golick Sr., Marty Smith, who is in Atlanta. Mike is in Bristol. Dave Pash here in Arizona. Notre Dame, which has won 11 straight games, the longest active win streak in the country, facing a third and nine against Georgia Tech here on its opening drive. Book dumps it off, and a broken tackle close to the first down is McKinley, and it looks like he's able to move the chains. The big pickup there for Book and company through the air as they have come out and decided to throw the ball on every down here. Yeah, one of their large receivers in McKinley had him in the slot on the left side. He just did a crossing route, and that's just like get, get the big man the ball and let him do the rest. You saw Matt at the end of the play just got tripped up there, but did get enough for the first down. They're going to run it here to Kyron Williams, and he's tackled for a loss of about three by true freshman Jared Ivey. Take a look at today's keys to the game brought to you by Jared. Well, again, as I mentioned at the top, continue to build on the...
passing momentum uh, that they had last week against Pittsburgh and contained Jeff Sims. We'll talk about him on Georgia Tech side, the true freshman quarterback. And for Georgia Tech, to, to, you've you got a, a lot of young players playing. Do not be your own worst enemy. That's what cost them last week against Boston College. Book to throw here on second and 13, and it's caught into Georgia Tech territory to the 47-yard line is Brock Wright. We talked about the fact that Notre Dame will employ five tight ends. We've seen three of them already in the game of the catch. Yeah, that's something for Ian Booker, and, and that's, not, that's not a last choice. These tight ends are very, very prominent in this offense as your first and second choice at times. They'll certainly take their shots deep, but the tight end a monster part both in the run game and going here with a run play to Kyron Williams and behind that huge offensive line for Notre Dame able to get the first down all upperclassmen the only junior is Jared Patterson the other guys are either seniors or grad students including the outstanding left tackle Liam Eichenberg is making his 32nd career start yeah starting this game all five today they combined now are at 137 starts an incredible veteran group for a school I talked about tight ends that is very very known for NFL linemen that they bring out of this college yeah, Ronnie Stanley of the Ravens just got that huge contract the other day big hole here off the right side for Kyron Williams inside the 25 and thrown out of bounds at the 24 yard line but the first big chunk play for Notre Dame offensively nice block by the right tackle in, in Hainsey number 72 just a nice pushing outside and for a Georgia Tech player need to kind of constrict that hole to the outside gets a great push out a great hole to run through not even touched till the third level gain of 19 on the play for Williams who averages over 100 yards per game. Book off play action, steps up to take off. And he gets clocked from behind at the 20-yard line by Jordan Dominic. But Book hops right to his feet, never afraid to run, has 13 career rushing touchdowns. Yeah, Georgia Tech does have 11 sacks this year, and it's one thing for the other side for Ian Book that Coach Kelly talked about is, and Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator, and even Ian himself, I need to hang in the pocket a little more before I take off. He's dangerous with his legs, but he would like to make the play with his arm. He said he has to be more cognizant to stay in the pocket and try and make the play. Run play on second down and four. Tyree and able to break the initial tackle. Looks like he'll come up a yard short of the line to gain on this seven-minute drive by Notre Dame to start the ball game. Well, but I love seeing all those all those black shirts for defense. That's a Jeff Collins defense right there. Jeff Collins is known for his defense. Uh, and along with his defensive coordinator, Andrew Thacker, they love guys to the ball. You saw six, seven jerseys on the ball, but another third and short for Notre Dame. This would be a win given this long drive if Georgia Tech could hold them to a field goal attempt. So far on this drive, Notre Dame three of three on third down. They need a yard here, and they get it and more with Kyron Williams. Stood up by Wanye Thomas, but a fresh set of downs here for the Irish. Trying to get to 6 0 before their showdown in South Bend with Clemson next Saturday. Well, we're, we're seeing the balance here, and we've seen Notre Dame do this before come out throwing the ball, actually throwing, then setting up the run. And what it does is it keeps the defense on their heels. And as we're going to talk about Georgia Tech more in the team that Jeff Collins is building, just two years removed from a triple option team and a smaller size defense, a lot of young players out there. So first and goal from the 10 yard line out of the pistol formation. Here is Williams. And dropped at the eight-yard line by Quez Jackson. So a pickup of two on the play for Williams. That's going to be a big key for Georgia Tech this game, those linebackers, the two big tacklers, David Curry and Quez Jackson. Because this offensive line, as you mentioned, Dave, this is a one of the top offensive lines. They'll be up for the Joe Moore Award as a top O line in the country. They do well staying on their block. So these linebackers filling the holes is going to be so key for Georgia Tech trying to slow the run game down. Here's Book rolling out to his right. Pass to the end 
zone is caught for a touchdown. Joe Wilkins pulls it in. What a phenomenal drive to start the game for Notre Dame. It takes almost nine minutes off the clock as Wilkins gets his first touchdown of the year. And we have an injured Georgia Tech player. Just four catches on the year for Wilkins. That's his fifth and a big one for this 15-play opening drive for Notre Dame. And all those four catches you mentioned came in the season opener. So Wilkins back being a factor here in week six. Charlie Thomas, the injured Georgia Tech player. And you could tell there he was shaken up yep. trying to cover the receiver coming out of his break. Exploration. It's in our DNA. Standing opening drive by Notre Dame. 15 plays tying its longest drive of the season. Ian Book with a touchdown pass to Joe Wilkins. Book went 7-for-7 seven seven through the air on that first possession. There was an injured player for Georgia Tech, Charlie Thomas. And so... They'll kick the extra point now with Jonathan Dorr. Almost nine minutes off the clock on the first drive of the game. The extra point, though, is good, but barely inside that right upright to make it 7-zip. Notre Dame, Irish trying to get to 6-0. and Clemson next week. The Super Big 80. The 39, they outscored their opponents. They struggled against Louisville, but escaped and then throttled Pitt the very next week. The largest margin of victory in a road game for Notre Dame since 2003. Of course, next week, Clemson. Will Trevor Lawrence be back after testing positive for COVID-19? Clemson able to get past Boston College. As far as passing the test for potential trap game for Notre Dame today against Georgia Tech, so far so good for the Irish after that impressive first drive. I mean, Dave, you can't draw it up any better. 91 yards, they start behind the, the, the normal 25-yard line. They're 91 yards, 15 plays, eight runs, seven passes, and of the passes, Ian Book completed them all. We talked about his completion percentage being under 60%. This is the kind of consistency. Even they were shorter passes, that's fine to have a drive like that. Now the defense, which has really been the stars of this year for Notre Dame, takes the field. Giving up less than 10 points per game, and on the very first play, they take down the running back, Jameer Gibbs, for a loss on the play. Hunga Bailoa Amosa and Dalen Hayes in there defensively for Notre Dame as you look at true freshman quarterback Jeff Sims, originally committed to Florida State. And those passing yards are the most through six games at Georgia Tech in 19 years. Now, part of that is because they haven't had really a passing offense in a long time, running the triple option. Here's Sims taking off. He's an excellent runner, and he heads out of bounds around the 30, picking up five. Yeah, Sims has run the ball. That's his 70th run of the year. 275 yards, four touchdowns. Gang, he is going to be fun to watch. Again, true freshman. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. As Dalen Hayes, who made the play on the first play, was offside. You saw him jump in there on the second play. But... There's three true freshmen starting here with Sims, the running back, Jameer Gibbs, and the right tackle, Jordan Williams, who's been a big-time standout for them. But Sims, big at 6'4", can make any throw, can run the ball. He's dangerous as well. So, And just a true freshman, a lot, of, a lot of time in front of him. Hand off here on second down and five to Gibbs. He'll come up a couple of yards short of the line to gain, dragged down by Drew White. I mean, talking with the Georgia Tech coaches, they, they think Jeff Sims eventually will be a first-round pick. Now, that's asking a lot of a guy that is fairly removed from high school as they pick up the first down here running it with Gibbs. But to your point earlier on Sims, I mean, he looks the part as both a runner and a passer. He's got two quality wins. Florida State, they hammered Louisville, a team that Notre Dame barely beat. You have to understand what this team is doing and what Jeff Collins is doing. We'll talk about a lot during this game. Two years removed from a triple option, so the type of players they need to bring in are not option players from O-line to D-line to, to terminology to method to plays. So th this is this is going to be, it's going to take some time. You're going to see a lot of young players as Dalen Hayes in on another tackle there. It is going to take some time. Jeff Collins was successful when he was a coach at Temple. Knows the type of players he needs here. 
year, and he's going with young guys to get that experience in this new system. Two yards on the carry there for Gibbs, so here is second down and eight. At the Georgia Tech 41-yard line. Sims trying to set up a screen that was snuffed out. And down goes Gibbs. You saw the whiff by Hayes. But uh, Tonga by Loa Mosa did not whiff. Oh, what a great duck by Gibbs. And again, you'll see him coming out of the backfield. Another true freshman, a lot. Get the ball in his hands. He ducks below that tackle. But there, Notre Dame will give you that shorter pass and that underneath pass. And they all then converge and run to the ball extremely well. Loss of five on the play. Third down and 13. Sims looking to take off here. Now backs up and throws it. And it's incomplete. You saw McLeod, the grab transfer from NC State, there in coverage for Notre Dame to force a punt. Obviously very difficult for this offense with young players on it from running back to quarterback to an excellent sophomore receiver in a Marion Brown that we'll talk about to put them in third and long situations against one of the top defenses in the country. And here's something you don't see every day, a 260-pound punter. But Presley Harvin is one of the best in college football. Two-time Ray Guy National Player of the Week already this season. Not the best kick there, though. Fair catch made at the 33-yard line for Notre Dame. 7-0 Irish in front of Tech late in the first. At Burger King, we have flame-grilled beef, lettuce, onion, tomatoes. Wait, is that supposed to... Oh, yes, it is. The two for... When it comes to laundry, everyone thinks their way is the right way. I wash on delicate. I just stuff everything in. Was no commandments, just candy. On first down, they run Flemister, and he picks up about four or five yards. The one-time Georgia Tech commit, who's from Williamson, Georgia, on the run. So, so you know it's just going to be a matter of time before they try and get that running game going after the first drive where we saw seven for seven out of Ian Book. Four to the wide receivers, three to the tight ends. And we'll get into it. The wide receivers, the kind of the new group, the top three receivers from last year, all gone. So he's got a new group he started out with this year. Run it here on second down and five. Flemister stacked up after a pickup of two. So, you know, here, Tommy Reese, the offensive coordinator, he played under Brian Kelly. Back, uh, he played in the national championship game, the game that my, my sons Mike and Jake were on that team against Alabama. Played quarterback a year or so past that as well. Played under Brian Kelly. Then was out of football after the Washington football team released him and then got into coaching. We'll get into where he was in coaching, but all the way now to a very young coordinator calling the plays. A wide receiver screen on first down, or on third down, rather, and they pick up a first down. Avery Davis, three catches last week against Pitt, two already today against Georgia Tech. One thing about Notre Dame receivers and tight ends, you better be able to block, and they love these quick passes. They get the linemen out in front of them as well. These linemen are very active and stay on their feet very well. Give a nice wall to run behind. Everybody helps one another with the blocking downfield. Ian Book, eight of eight so far. Play action here, Book in trouble, and down he goes, back at the 46-yard line. Two Tech defenders in the backfield, led by Caleb Oliver. You also saw Jamon Brooks, a walk-on who wasn't even recruited back there for Georgia Tech. Uh, you look at Notre Dame has just given up nine sacks this year. That now number 10, tight end Brock Wright getting beat on the outside to force Ian Book to step up into the arms of the big guy. There you go, the big man. My son Mike always talks about that. If you're going to wear zero, he wants it to be a D tackle who's over 300 pounds. Meet 6'1", 305, Jamon Brooks. Book on second and 14, flag down, ball is out, and it's recovered by the Yellow Jackets. Jordan Dominic with the recovery for Georgia Tech. Let's see what the flag's about, though. Fumble recovery by Georgia Tech. Personal foul. 
Illegal hands to the face. Georgia Tech. Oh. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So this game is what we talk about. Jeff Collins laid out six plays last week that were worth in the area of 42 points for Boston College in their game uh, with Georgia Tech. Look at the center of the screen. The hands up in the face. Into the face of Tommy Kramer. That was the man I was just talking about, Jamon Brooks. But th this is a big play that's taken away. They had a 98-yard kickoff return taken away by a penalty. Uh, they, they hurt themselves, and that's something that, that can't be done with a young crew, a team, a crew that's an underdog in these games. You have to make plays for yourself, and here they try to do it, and it goes against them with that penalty. So the question is, was it an incomplete pass? Was the hand going forward? I think that's going to impact, I guess, ball placement here, whether it was a, a fumble, since it was a live ball foul, right. or whether the hand was going forward, it was an incomplete pass. But just to follow up on your point, Mike, about Georgia Tech killing itself this year, I mean, you're, the penalties are one thing. 18 turnovers, yeah. that's second in the country. Only Duke has more. But six block kicks in six games. They've had four field goals and two extra points blocked this year. And it was a combination of penetration up the middle and low kicks. You know, as, as Jeff Collins says, you know, special teams, he, he treats just like offense to defense and said how much work they needed to work on that, which, again, was cut short because of COVID. After further review, the rule on the field is confirmed. The penalty enforcement results in an automatic touchdown. So th this is something that's just going to have to come over time again with a young with a young group now Jamon Brooks is a fifth-year senior who had that penalty uh, So that, that that certainly hurts there with an older guy But these are all learning lessons that he's going through with these players. I, I like what he's doing I love to talk to him. I love his passion He knows exactly what he wants and he has to have these guys learn from these experiences Final minute here of the opening quarter. First down of the Georgia Tech 30. Play fake for Book. Taking a shot here. And thrown over the head of Skoranek. But a big play in the winter pit last week. Brad transfer from Northwestern. See, those are the plays with Ian Book at times. He leaves plays on the field. That's what you have a 6-3 receiver in Skoranek, as you mentioned, with a couple of touchdowns. Give him a chance. Give him a chance on a 50-50 ball to out-jump the defender, but you don't do it when you throw it out of bounds. Yeah, Trey Swilling there in coverage. Second down and 10. Another pass play here from Book. Unloads downfield, and the catch made at the 15. Javon McKinley, very active. Three catches already here in the first half. He, again, is, is a crossing route. is one of his first catches, another middle route there. They like him across the middle. He's a big body, can box out if need be. Again, the pass there a little low. If it's a little higher, you maybe continue running on the throw. But another completion. 9 of 10, Ian Book, for 80 yards. Exactly what the doctor ordered for this passing game that started to come out of its shell better last week against Pitt. 312 yards for Book in that win against Pitt. As they run the ball here on first down and get maybe a couple of yards. Good job of the point of attack by George Tech defensively. The Notre Dame dominant on offense in that opening quarter a near nine minute long drive with joe wilkins paying it off with a touchdown catch in the last 31 games and one of those losses was against clemson in the college football playoff for this year only notre dame a member of the acc even though they do play normally a number of acc foes top two teams in the acc will play in the acc championship game Notre Dame faces Clemson next week in South Bend. Here's Kyron Williams off the left side on second down. And they block pops free. And it's recovered by Georgia Tech. Scooped up by Zamari Walton. Nobody's going to catch him. Scoop and score for Walton. The chance to tie the game for Tech. Thacker and the aggressiveness 
It is about pulling the ball free. That time it was Wanye Thomas. We saw Trey Swilling cause a fumble earlier in the game. So you get guys wrapping the carry and the ball carry and other guys going for the ball. Great job. That is absolutely taught by the coaches and done to perfection by that Georgia Tech defense. By Georgia Tech. Previous play is under further review. It's under review. That means we can watch it again and say yeah. what a great play that was defensively. It didn't look like uh, Kyron Williams was down when the ball came out. I did not think he was down again. No, that, that ball looks uh, tough to tell from that angle. You see the ball out, but we couldn't tell where Kyron was. But look at all the look at all the jerseys around him. I mean, here's the thing, too. I mean, ruling on the field is a fumble, and if we don't have indisputable yep. video evidence beyond all doubt, there's no way they're going to overturn no, that. No shot they're overturning that. Just a great job by Thomas ripping that ball out as Williams is going down. He's clearly stopped. One, two, three are there. He's trying, Williams is trying to drive for more yards, which is what a running back does. And Thomas doing exactly what he's coached, ripped that ball out. Notre Dame coming into this game was outscoring opponents in the second quarter, 73 to six. And Georgia Tech just matched it on that run back by Walton. We'll get the official number on how long of a return it was. But after further the review, call. the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So Notre Dame, a team which doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and Georgia Tech usually on the giving end of the turnover deal, able to come up with a huge takeaway that maybe changes this game dramatically. Well, in their two wins this year, they were in the plus category in turnovers, and their losses, all their losses, they were minus. So we'll keep a big eye on that. Some things never change, and that's what turnovers, how they can affect the game. 93-yard fumble return for a touchdown point after is good. We are tied at seven. Zamari Walton with the run back. And an injured Georgia Tech player. Let's go to the studio. Dave, this studio update is brought to you by AT&T 5G. Spencer Sanders in Oklahoma State knocking on the door to Tylen Wallace right there. Oklahoma State, they ring the bell at home first. 7-0 over Texas. And how about this? Three touchdown underdogs. Michigan State, Mel Tucker going to the big house and knocking off the Wolverines 27-24. Back to you. And Kevin, that's big when you consider they lost to Rutgers last week to bounce back and beat their rivals, Michigan, today. So injured Georgia Tech player, Kenny Cooper, offensive lineman down for the Yellow Jackets. One Penn State trying to bounce back after losing to Indiana. Zamari Walton, a school record 93-yard fumble return for a touchdown. We saw a fumble return for a touchdown for Boston College of 90-plus in its game against Clemson. That boosted the Eagles' confidence. They were in the game till the end. We'll see if this play by Walton changes things now for Georgia Tech, which was getting completely dominated through one quarter of play. Here's Chris Tyree. Or Notre Dame, a nice return. So let's look back at this fumble return. And for those out there that maybe were saying, well, wait a minute, was his, was his momentum stopped? Uh, and should it have been blown dead? Well, it wasn't on the field. And when it goes to replay, that can't be replayed. They can't look at the replay and say, well, maybe his momentum was stopped. That's not under replay and can't be reviewed. But that can. And that was the exact right call. Great job again. Stripping the ball by Wanye Thomas and Zamari Walton with the new school record. Iron Williams back in the game here, and it's a jet sweep pitch, and Jordan Dominic is not full throwing. Avery Davis down to the ground for a loss. We've already called his name a couple of times, Jordan Dominic, not getting fooled on the jet sweep. Again, not being blocked at all and getting upfield taking away any chance to get to the corner quickly, making the runner retreat south of north and south and then makes the play as well. So a five-yard setback, second down and 15 for the Irish. 
Book in trouble, almost runs into Kyron Williams. Now takes off for the sideline. Got a lot of running room. Out of bounds around the 30, so he picks up close to 10 on that play. They'll be in a third and manageable situation here. And a tie ball game early in the second quarter in Atlanta. Obviously, Notre Dame, which had the long first drive, would like to maintain that clock control. Georgia Tech would love to force a punt here. Ian Book, it's so one thing we talk about, maybe an inconsistent passing game at times, but he does that so well with his legs to put them in manageable situations. Notre Dame perfect so far on third down. 22-year-old quarterback. California grad student 25 and 3 as a starter as the Irish quarterback has an open man here It's Davis for a first down. There is a penalty flag in the secondary though at the 46 yard line While well, we see what the flag is we always talk about an offensive line when you talk about protecting the quarterback first, uh, Face mask number three defense 15 yard penalty from end of the run automatic first down Okay, that's so Trey Swilling yeah. with the face mask penalty tech on 15 more for Notre Dame Again, you know, we saw something good happen to Georgia Tech, but too many of these type of plays This is already a completed pass. It was going to be a big game It was off the uh, away from the ball. away from the ball Downfield and a late thrown flat Notre Dame now at the 42-yard line of Georgia Tech. And a big hole here for Williams. Picks up nine on the play. It's the old reliable for Notre Dame. Just running behind the, one of the better old lines in the country. Times you forget about that. You see plays on the outside and such. That every now and then they can just, they can just take the ball and run it. They're averaging over 230 rushing yards a game. 15 rushing touchdowns this year. They'll give it to Williams again. Gets the first down and more. Now they're just leaning on him here. Notre Dame trying to get to 5 0 in conference play. Clemson with that win earlier today against Boston College, setting up the showdown between these two top five teams in South Bend next week. I'm in North Carolina, both 4 and 1 in league play. And again, no divisions this year in the ACC. Top two teams will play in Charlotte for the ACC championship game on December 19th. Gain of 11 on Williams on that last play. And here comes a jet sweep to Tyree with blockers out in front. Lowers the boom on the defender at the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Irish. Leading the way there, Tommy Trimble, 11 starts in his career. And again, multiple tight ends they use. Look at him out front, sustaining that block. Sustaining, just driving, staying on, not letting the defender come off. That opens it up for a running back who was already so free and not getting touched anyway. Nice stable of running backs for Notre Dame, including that youngster right there, the true freshman. Right, you got Tyree, Williams, Flemister. They have Jafar Armstrong, but Brian Kelly told us we may see him more at receiver this week. That's actually what he was recruited for as a receiver. They moved to running back, now going to play some receiver. First and goal from the Georgia Tech two yard line. And they just plow straight ahead, and it's an easy touchdown for Kyron Williams. Nice response by Notre Dame after the scoop and score from Walton. Wow, I mean, you're talking right over Aaron Banks, 330 pounds. Liam Eichenberg, 300 pounds. Just getting out of man and not letting them off. Jared Patterson as well. Just an excellent job of staying on your man, driving. That's textbook two-yard run. Stay up, drive your man, lean on him. Let your running back just fall into the end zone. So, Mike, you had that 91-yard drive to start the game, and then now a 75-yard drive. This one took a lot shorter than the other one, just 3.48 off the clock. Point after makes it 14-7 Notre Dame. Clemson back in 2011. Clemson was ranked number six that year. One of the bigger upsets actually wasn't a win. It was a tie between unranked Georgia Tech and number one Notre Dame in 1980, 3-3.
But I uh, thought we had an agreement not to show things like that today. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's, nobody cares what I think, huh? <laughs> It's the truck. They, they, <laughs> it was all them. I had nothing to yeah, do with it. They're not getting any candy. See how Georgia Tech responds after Notre Dame with a rushing oh, touchdown. Oh, oh, oh. This will be a touchback. We'll come out to the 25. Let's check in with Marty Smith. As the unicorn is the football coach who actually encourages his players and his team to look ahead. But Brian Kelly told us this week that's what he's doing this year with this Notre Dame Fighting Irish team. He said, I got to get these guys to realize how good they are and how good they can be. We're Notre Dame. We win. We're past the thrill of winning. It's what we do. The thing is, we've won inconsistently. And if we want to be champions, we have to become more consistent. And the way that they do that is this equation, he said. Performance over outcome. It's not who we play, it's how we play. That has to be the standard, and if that is indeed our standard, we have the opportunity to be really special this year. And Marty, he and Book told us, hey, it's refreshing as a player to, to be able to talk big picture and not always have to say, we're just taking it one game at a time. Gain of three for Jack Coco on the reception. Now they run it here on second down. A huge hit by Gibbs against the Notre Dame defender. They'll come up just short of the line to gain third down. Oh, Gibbs, 5'11", 200-pounder. Again, true freshman. Watch this drop in the shoulder. That was a Wusu yes. Koromoa is an excellent player. He got toasted that time. A Wusu Koromoa you are going to see on Sundays early in, in, in the draft and see him playing on Sundays. And he tried to shoulder tackle Gibbs, bounce off a bit, and then made a nice game. On third down and two. That'll be close and definitely marked short of the line to gain. Fourth down here from the 34-yard line. Well, that's one, I mean, well, your defense been on the field a lot already, Dave. You've had the ball for just under four minutes. Really needed that first down there to give your defense a little more of a break. Now, fourth and a half a yard at your own 34-yard line there, punt. Matt Salerno is deep for Notre Dame here. Presley Harvin. Only a 29-yard punt first time around. And it'll be Notre Dame ball near its 25-yard line. Let's check in with Kevin Agandi. Dave, let's go back to Stillwater. Oklahoma State up 7-0. Texas responds. Keontae Ingram. We're tied up at seven apiece, and this is about under six minutes to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma State, Dave, that only team undefeated the Big 12. No, that defense, the way they're playing this year. Very aggressive. Yeah, we had them, I know it was against Kansas, yeah. but still, uh, they played a complete game that day and pretty much half throughout. Tulsa gave them a scare early on, a game that was postponed and then made up. Here it's 14-7 Notre Dame. The lone score for Georgia Tech came on defense. Here is Book dumping it underneath. And it's a first down catch for Tommy Tremble, one of those other tight ends. Tremble. Coaches think might be faster than, than Michael Mayer, who gets uh, a lot of the accolades, but Tremble able to move the chains there. Don't forget our ABC Prime game, Ohio State, Penn State, following us here on ABC. We're looking forward to that matchup. Still, Penn State stinging over that loss last week to Indiana. They need this one. Two losses right out of the gate. It's going to pretty much knock you out of it. Play action here for Ian Book and has to just throw it in the dirt as that screen pass was snuffed out by Mike Lockhart. Mike, going back to what Marty was saying about Brian Kelly, uh, what, what are your thoughts on kind of looking big picture, not always saying we're just going to focus on the opponent this week, but we're going to talk about Clemson. We're going to talk about winning an ACC championship, a national championship. Well, as we see what they do here on second ten. Good job by the, there, yeah. stuffed by Georgia Tech's front. They're down. I think I think one of the first things, Dave, is first you have a you have a very veteran team that can handle things like that. And second, we're in the day and age where you can't hide these things. You know, you go back to the 
Stone Ages when I played. I mean, you know, the, the sports was local sports for their minute and a half. You know, ESPN was only a few years old. There wasn't a lot of national talk about games where they tried to keep it in-house. Here, all these guys see it on social media, articles everywhere. Everybody knows it's coming. So Brian Kelly is basically saying, okay, you know it's coming, but understand, we need to play better against the Georgia Techs and other teams of the world, play better here and do better to prepare ourselves for the big games. Flag down here, Book on third down and 10, just gonna keep it, and gets wrapped up at the line of scrimmage by Curry and Jackson. It'll be fourth down unless it's a penalty on Georgia Tech. Yeah, I think this is gonna be holding on Notre Dame. It'll be declined to be fourth down. Notre Dame is gonna punt, so. Holding, number 78, offense. Penalties decline. fourth down. I, I, I understand. Timeout, injured Georgia Tech player. Another Georgia Tech player down. I, I do understand what Brian Kelly is doing by saying, guys, we all know it's there, but understand the meaning of that game is significantly less if you don't take care of business now. Much to what we were talking about uh, early that Marty was mentioning that, you know, it's about performance over outcome. You have to play better consistently. Notre Dame wants to be with the top teams in the country. Those top teams consistently play uh, a really good to great ball. Notre Dame needs to do that against all their opponents, not just when they're going to have a big game because they have struggled against top opponents. Amarian Brown is deep. Dangerous player with the ball in his hands. But a return of only five yards. Brought down by Isaiah Pryor. 14-7. Notre Dame midway through the second quarter. Following party for Children's Health Care of Atlanta. As Sims dumps it off here on first down. Penalty marker is down. So is uh, Amari and Brown. After a game of about eight, and he's shaken up. It's like Notre Penalties Dame. on Notre Dame. Yeah, they lined up off sides as Brown is slow to get up. Offside. Defense, number 41, five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So that's on Kurt Heinisch. As you look at Jeff Cowles, we were showing you uh, the, the Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Every time there is a third or fourth down stop, called the money down, and he literally puts his money where his mouth is. He, he donates 10 bucks every single time they get a stop or a conversion on third and fourth down. Yeah, it was uh, at uh, 93 coming into this game. So my math says that's $930. At this point, donated. That's awesome. That's a great job by Jeff as Brown is getting looked at, the sophomore. Remember, we, we talk about this Georgia Tech team. It is Jeff Sims, true freshman. Jamar Gibbs, true freshman. The running back, number 54, the right tackle, Jordan Williams, true freshman. And Amari and Brown, the sophomore. These are the, the linchpins for this offense as they're just getting out of that triple option mode. If the offensive linemen they'll now bring in will be, well, they'll try and get bigger offensive linemen. They're usually smaller when you run the option. So building for the future. Coming up tomorrow on Sunday NFL Countdown, Tom Brady and Randy Moss, one-time teammates in New England, go one-on-one -on -one in a sit-down conversation. Plus, before Tua makes his NFL debut, we're sitting down with some of the game's greatest left-handed quarterbacks. Kick off your week eight with Sunday NFL Countdown, 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Yeah, I tell you, it's, uh, holding his arm looked like Brown had reached up for his shoulder. We'll talk about Moss and Brady when they were together in New England, a record-setting year for Moss. How about New England now sitting at two and four, playing the Bills this week, sitting at five and two. What a big game. Cam Newton not really been playing that great just yet, certainly dealt with the COVID, and has been struggling since then as well. Stephon Gilmore out. There have been trade rumors surrounding him. First down and five for Georgia Tech at the 39-yard line. And they run it straight ahead for about four yards. That was Jordan Mason getting the carry. He missed four games earlier this year due to injury. But he's back in the lineup at almost 1,000 yards a year ago on the ground. Pass play for Sims here in trouble. Gets away from Heinisch. And Sims able to turn it upfield to get back to the line of scrimmage, but did not appear to reach the ball out and get the first down. It'll be third and one. So 
Georgia Tech certainly wants to hang on to the ball here and get the, uh, the first down on third short because their defense has been huffing and puffing out on the field an awful lot with Notre Dame's offense. So keep the ball here. This is when, hey, I've been in there. Well, you guys, a defender on the field lot, you're out there drinking some Gatorade on the sideline goal. Come on, guys, get a yard. Get a yard. Give me another set of downs on the sideline here to rest up. Mason is the back here on third down and one. Just 19 yards of total offense. They get about four there. Enough to move the chains. That's big for Georgia Tech. You were talking about the youth for the Yellow Jackets. And, and you're going up against a veteran defense that gives up less than 10 points per game. Only Marshall is better in FBS defensively right now, statistically, than Notre Dame. You know, I was comparing them to the Notre Dame defense of 2012, the title year. After five games, that defense gave up 39 points. This defense has only given up 49 points. And only one touchdown outside the red zone all year. Sims dumps it off here and right in the face of Jordan Mason is Kyle Hamilton, outstanding sophomore from Atlanta, went to the Marist School, which is just 14 miles from Bobby Dodd Stadium. Gang, this is a name you're going to hear an awful lot in college this year and next year, and then in the NFL. Six foot four, 220 pound safety. Fits the mold of that NFL safety. Such fluid hips. Great knowledge of the game. Impressive, impressive player to watch. Sims from the pocket on second and 12. Had a receiver wide open, but overshot Dylan Leonard, the tight end. I mean, third down and 12. Tough to beat a team like Notre Dame if you miss on those kind of opportunities. That's exactly right, Dave. And these are the plays, again, as a true freshman, he's going to grow, he's going to learn, he's going to understand. I got him open, just put the ball there. Don't, you don't have to make him work for it. It's a learning process right now, but the serious upside here. Sims, two-time ACC Rookie of the Week. First time Georgia Tech has had a player win that award twice since Calvin Johnson did it four times in 2004. On third and long, Sims' pass is pulled in to Notre Dame territory by Jalen Camp. He landed on a defender, so he's only a couple of yards short of the line to gain here. Four down, what do you do? Oh, have go to, for it. Yeah, have to go for it. I don't think there's any doubt. I would be stunned. Uh, I think they'll be going for this. 27, Jordan Mason in the game. He is there, and we saw him get the last first down on third and one. He's their downhill runner at 6'1", 218 pounds. So I'm sure it made it either a handoff to him or a play action to him and a quick pass. And a timeout called here by Georgia Tech to talk it over on fourth down and two. Trailing Notre Dame by seven at the four-minute mark of the first half. Howdy, folks. Colonel Sanders here to make dinner time a little easier. The Tech campus where this game is being played. It was supposed to be played at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the Falcons, but moved on campus. Big fourth down here for Georgia Tech. Gibbs is in the game now on fourth down and two. Notre Dame 50% on fourth down defensively, but that's going up as Kyle Hamilton was in the backfield immediately and takes down Gibbs for a loss. Well, we just talked about Kyle Hamilton and, and, and what he is able to do. Blitz coming off the top right here, just going to make the play. Nothing fancy in the backfield at all. Going up, not buckles underneath the block. As you see, Zach Quinney pulling out to try and hook him, but he was quick enough to get underneath the block. Quinney out too far and letting the defender come underneath before he could hook him to give him the edge. It's just smart play on Hamilton's part. Take advantage of your speed and quickness over an offensive lineman. No sense in taking him on. Just go underneath him. Notre Dame going to run Chris Tyree here on first down. And he's down to the 43 for about six. You know, going back to that fourth down play, you talked about the speed, Mike. And would you say this is a faster defense for Notre Dame we've seen? And you're trying to run that play to the perimeter this, against this, a guy like Hamilton out there? This is one of the biggest differences I've seen in this Notre Dame defense over the years is, is speed. They've lacked that, would get burned on bigger plays or by faster teams. And they have the speed that can stay with teams now as well. I thought possibly it would be Gibbs out on the, in the backfield. He catches the ball very well out of the backfield. Thought they were going to go down that road. 
Big hole here on second down for Tyree. Inside the 30-yard line for the true freshman. Over 100 yards against Florida State this year. In a win for Notre Dame, he averages over six yards a pop. Talk about the tight ends again on the blocks. Watch them just staying on their men. Two tight ends there. There's one block, right? Look at just staying on their guy. They do such a nice job. The linemen and, and the tight ends are leaning it. And Brock Wright is more of a blocking tight end. Just two catches on the year. Excellent job. Pressure here from Georgia Tech off the edge. Book going for Tyree. And made the catch at the 22-yard line. It's amazing to look at the stats. Georgia Tech has 25 yards. Notre Dame has 225. Yet it's only a seven-point game, and Georgia Tech just had the ball in Notre Dame territory before turning it over on downs. And that, that's exactly the message Jeff Collins, I'm sure, is going to tell his players. You're one play away. Look at the one play we had that got us here. We're one play away. We're a good drive away. If they can keep them out of the end zone on this drive or, or hopefully without a field goal either. Remember, Georgia Tech has two wins. They were in the plus category in turnovers like they are right now. So the last play was ruled incomplete. One official had it as a catch, but overturned incomplete. They go empty on second down and 10. Book takes off inside the 20, and Book gets the first down close to the 15-yard line. So again, this is where Book is so smart in seeing coverage. He'll see, as he'll see man coverage all down uh, uh, behind him. So when he sees that and the middle opens up, it's man free. It's only the safety that's free. And that's the first guy that gets to him because everybody else is in man coverage. They're locked in on their receiver. Ian Book knows that, sees that he has all the space in the world and he can be very dangerous with his legs like he was there. From the Georgia Tech 14, nearing two minutes to go here till halftime. Book in trouble. Backs up after eluding pressure and throws it away. Now, one thing Book doesn't do, usually, Mike, is make big mistakes. You look at the last two years, 41 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. That was a little dangerous there with uh, worlds colliding, but he somehow escaped and threw it away. Right. He won't make the turnover mistake. We saw with the pass with Skoranek, the 6'3 receiver, he didn't give him a chance to a jump for a ball. Let's talk about leaving plays on the field sometimes. Yeah, but he, he is not a turnover guy. He knows how to keep the ball in their possession. You do have to wonder if Trevor Lawrence is back, can he make enough big plays in the game next week to knock off Clemson? As the play clock was at one, Notre Dame, Notre Dame had to use a timeout to lead the Irish with two. Of the half, 30 second timeout. Well, and, and that's what they'll need. You're right. That Notre Dame isn't really a team that passes the ball an entire game. They mix it with the run. They'll pass to set up the run or vice versa. Today, they use the pass to set up the run. And that will be the question. Will Trevor Lawrence be back? Now, by the protocols that they're using in the ACC and with Clemson, it would seem, I believe, by next Friday, that would be the 10 days for Trevor Lawrence to be available to be back and playing again. And if all holds true and he has a negative test and he's available on Friday, I would imagine that he will be ready to, ready to go and be playing when they come into South Bend. If he were in the Big Ten, he'd be out three weeks. Yes, right? he would. The 21-day yep. rule. Uh, it's a minimum 10 days. So to your point, I got to imagine with the, the positive test Wednesday, it, it, he, he also has to be symptom-free for exactly. at least 24 hours before returning. So if he, if he doesn't have any symptoms and he's good to go, you would think he'll be there in South Bend on Saturday. From that, po that point where he tested positive to next Friday, he has to, he has to be free of the symptoms, the cardiac tests as well, for him to be able to play. Second down and 10 play action. Book leaving the pocket again. Overthrows the intended target. Tommy Tremble bringing up third down and 10. What could be a huge opportunity for Georgia Tech here defensively to stay within striking distance. Now he does get rushed out of the pocket a little bit, but he is rolling right as a right-handed quarterback. And he's got a wide open receiver. Again, that's that's one. That's one I know when he looks at it, when he and Tommy Reese, your coordinator, are looking at it saying, I've, I've got to make that play. I've got to be able to drop that one in there and get what would have been an easy touchdown. There's six of seven on third down today, but this is third and ten for Book. 
as Book throws it up for grabs. Incomplete going for Mayer. And good coverage that time by Caleb Oliver. It's fourth down, and Georgia Tech is off the field. Here comes the field goal unit for Notre Dame. Nice job by Georgia Tech. That's a, that's a good matchup, too. Caleb Oliver is 6'4". And Mayer is 6'5", so that, that's a nice as far as a jump ball matchup. That's that's sitting pretty for Georgia Tech, having a big man on a big man there in the past too high anyway. Jonathan Doerr has missed twice this year. It's a 32-yard attempt, though. Try to extend the lead here. Georgia Tech does have two timeouts for Mayer. And the field goal is perfect. Notre Dame 17, Georgia Tech 7. This season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Dave Pash here in the home office with the doorbell ringing, the trick-or-treaters here in Arizona. <laughs> Mike with uh, now one bag of candy. Uh, there were two at the beginning of the game in Bristol. Marty Smith checking in from the field in Atlanta. Our white balance in the shade at this point. Guys, uh, Notre Dame offensive coordinator Tom. Just wait until the end of the first half. No champion. Never right. had an inconsistent quarterback. Oh, my mic's not working, apparently. You're good now, Marty. We got You're you good. now, pal. Go ahead, Marty. Okay, apparently my mic is working, America. Let's try this again. Notre Dame uh, offensive coordinator Tommy Reese told us yesterday that Ian Book has to be more consistent. No championship team ever has a truly inconsistent quarterback, but then he did pause and say, but all Ian Book does is find ways to win, and that's what he's going to continue to do. Excellent coverage here by Notre Dame. Dante Smith didn't get much on the return. A minute 44 now to work with for Georgia Tech. But, you know, what's happening in, with some of those throws, and, and, and he's right, and Brian Kelly said the same thing. This guy does find a way, Ian Book, to make plays. But as Brian Kelly said, performance over outcome. Performance, drop that ball into Tremble, get that touchdown. Performance, let Skoranek have a chance, your 6-3 receiver, at a jump ball. You know, do those in, in the game where you're not playing the number one team in the country, so you can do it when you are playing the number one team in the country. Consistent with the outcome and the or the performance. Georgia Tech going to keep it on the ground here with Gibbs, and they get a big play. Bach will stop to reset the chains. Two timeouts left for Georgia Tech. That's just the 17th play that the Yellow Jackets have run today. Half of them have gone for zero or negative yardage. Here's Sims rolling out. Going to keep it. And gets maybe two or three yards. 120 and counting here for Tech. He is, every time he has the ball, he breaks out of that pocket. He is a big play away from making something happen with his legs or his arms. True freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. Sims to throw, has a completion. Short of the line to gain. Going to bring up third down here inside a minute to go, and Georgia Tech not calling a timeout. The catch made by Nate McCollum. Boy, taking a lot of time off the clock here. Pressure off the edge on third down as they run it, and Gibbs does have a first down. The clock will stop, reset the chains. Georgia Tech may want to think about a timeout as well here. Yeah. I think for the sake of your young quarterback, but they're not going to. Clock running, 30 seconds. Cost him about five seconds before the snap. Sims with a long throw. The catch is made by Leonard, but they don't get much. So they use a timeout there. 22 seconds left. You, you got to figure they need 20 or 25 yards to get within field goal range. But keep in mind, their field goal kickers are a combined one for five with four blocks. Yeah, you're, you're waiting for the shot downfield a little bit. Notre Dame does a good job of really not giving you that. They'll play off a bit. Play action not really a concern right now. You're not going to bring any defenders up. So Notre Dame will play back and say, we're going to give you everything you want underneath, and we'll just break on it. Now what Sims can do is he can give you more time. He can break out of that pocket, and then it turns into a little bit of a schoolyard play where they can hit a big play instead of just your basic pocket pass with a receiver streaking downfield. Notre Dame, I mean, 
it would be stunning, but we've seen it before with teams where you know a team wants to go deep and you still let them get behind you. Capital One halftime report. Kevin Agani, Booger McFarland, Mark Sanchez coming up in about 22 seconds. Here is second down and six for the true freshman. Sims dumps it off, but it's incomplete. Ezard couldn't hang on. 19 seconds to go in the half. Third down. In all honesty, it's better that he dropped that ball. They would have had to use their last time out. So now the clock stops. You still have the entire field open. First down will stop the clock. You can get a kill play if you want, or you can use your timeout. They have to try, you have to take a shot and take it downfield. I'm not saying a long pass, a deep pass, but you have to get to that middle level a little bit here if you're going to try and give yourself any kind of a chance. Need to get to the 45 for the first down. And one timeout left. Here's Gibbs carrying it and doesn't get the first down. So now he let the half just end. It's fourth down. Do you call a timeout here if you're Notre Dame to force a decision by Georgia Tech? Georgia Tech calls a timeout. Are they going to go for it? It's also remember they get the ball to start the second half. I'm sure while Jeff wants to give something a shot here, doesn't want anything crazy to happen because they do have the ball in the second half, but. We got a little confusion on the down here. Yeah. It doesn't help that neither you nor I are yeah. at the stadium, but it did say third down and six. And it, it didn't look like he had the first down, so the third and six must have been incorrect because now we're being told that it is a first down. So first and 10 uh, at the 39-yard line of Georgia Tech. So you still have the chance to use the, the entire field, though you need to get the first down, or if it's before that, you need to get out of bounds. If you get the first down, you're able to stop the clock and get a kill before one more play. And again, one for five combined for the field goal kickers for Georgia Tech, both true freshmen, but blocks have been the issue. Got to get something to the perimeter here. Three-man rush for Notre Dame. Sims steps up. And takes off, got to get out of bounds. He doesn't. And there's no way they'll be able to get up there and spike it in time. That's going to end the first half. So poorly executed by Georgia Tech. Ian Book, very sharp for Notre Dame. 17-7 Irish at halftime. The only score for Georgia Tech came on a school record 93-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown by Zamari Walton. Otherwise, it might be a runaway for Notre Dame, as it is Tech within striking distance with one half to go in Atlanta. As we send you to Kevin Agani, the Capital One Halftime Report, right after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Clemson, who will be without Trevor Lawrence, we were just told, from Dabo Sweeney, next Saturday in South Bend, leading Georgia Tech by 10. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. Well, this has been all Notre Dame except for one play, which we'll get to for Georgia Tech. But for Notre Dame, Ian Book having himself a game, 12 and 19, 99 yards. This touchdown pass to Joe Wilkins, not a ton of yards, but very effective. The defense doing what they've done all year. Georgia Tech, just 66 total yards. But here's the one play. The strip, the fumble, and the Zamari Walton new Georgia Tech fumble return for a touchdown record to keep Georgia Tech within shouting distance. They get the ball first in the second half. Very important drive. Georgia Tech, last win over an AP top five team, was back against Virginia Tech in 2009. Got a touchback here, it'll come out to the 25. Here's Marty Smith moments ago with Brian Kelly. Coach, what did you see that you liked and what didn't you like so much? Well, obviously, we, we controlled the football. Um, you know, we had, we stopped ourselves offensively, right? With the turnover, a um, couple of mistakes. Defensively, they haven't been able to move the football, so we played well defensively. You know, I just think there's another level we have to play at. You know, it's 17 7 at the half. This will be a big series here. We got to stop them on this first series, get the football and score, and, and take control of the football game. How close do you believe? you guys are to that next level you need to reach well we'll see here in the second half i don't think we played our best football but yet you know we really dominated the, the football game other than the turnover which you know you got to take care of the football down there or it's a different football game appreciate your time coach thank you so much thank you so penalty on notre dame 
uh, did not hear what the penalty was. Uh, Dave Pash in Phoenix, Mike uh, Golick in Bristol. Personal foul yeah. on uh, Drew White, the middle line. Foul fouls, I think 15 yards from the end of the run. This is just not smart. End of the play. They have him down. They're blowing the whistle. And Drew White, Drew White just, just throws him down. There's, there's, there's no need. You made the play. And, you know, these are the little mistakes, the things that Brian Kelly is talking about. They're dominating this game, but these these couple of mistakes, a few on offense, defensively, we really haven't seen any until that uh, that big mental mistake right there. You have a young offense. You see a point ahead. That's mental. It's exactly what it was. You had a young team with a second and long, and now they have a first and 10, 15 yards up. True freshman quarterback Jeff Sims, who certainly is capable, very electric, has made some big plays this year. Play action here for Sims, and the pass is incomplete, trying to hit Malachi Carter across the middle. Tariq Bracey on the coverage there for Notre Dame. As I said earlier, they'll give him the swing passes, they'll give him the quick slants, and they'll just break on him. Excellent break, excellent timing by Bracey right there. Second and ten, not, not great manageable situations for Georgia Tech the entire game. Sims to the air again here. And taking a shot down the middle of the field. It's Jalen Pan pulls it in. We talked about the fact that Sims is certainly capable, and they get a huge play here out of the young quarterback. That's their first shot down the field. Nick McLeod on the coverage. And this is one of the things we talked about with Sims. You know, inconsistent because he's so young, but boy, you get a glimpse of that arm right there. And now, 30, you make, you make a big play. Number 70, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. And then your right guard, Ryan Johnson, who's, who, as the coach as I said, is the smartest guy up front, but, you know, everybody's prone to mental errors, and that was one. So after a big play by Sims, you get a look at that arm. Again, really their first shot down the field. Now it's first and 15. Right, 39 yards on the pass play. They had 66 yards of total offense prior to that play. But first and 15 after the penalty. Sims in trouble, fumbles the ball as he sat. It's recovered by Notre Dame. Tonga by Loa Amosa with the fumble recovery. Dalen Hayes chopped it out of the hands of Jeff Sims. Again, this is on the true freshman right tackle, Jordan Williams, that we have talked about. He's just going to beat him on a flat outside rush and just get the hit. Excellent job on the inside. Bumosu, he sees the ball. Look at him spin out. He saw the ball on the ground. Watch the hit. Watch 95. He sees the ball on the ground. Look at him spin out. That was his way to get out, to get on the ball. Excellent awareness by him after a great rush by Dalen Hayes. Just another player on defense who you'll see playing on Sundays next year. Running right around the big 6'6", 330-pound true freshman right tackle. A huge play by the Notre Dame defense with Georgia Tech threatening. Down just 10 points early in the third quarter. Notre Dame will run it on first down. Kyron Williams wrapped up by Trey Swilling after a short game. In, in case you're just tuning in and haven't been paying attention to Twitter, uh, according to multiple reports, Dabo Sweeney has said that Trevor Lawrence is out for next week's game at Notre Dame. We knew it was going to be a big game anyway. But with the way Boston College hung in there against Clemson today with D.J. Uyongalale at quarterback, even though he threw the ball for almost 350 yards, it certainly makes next Saturday even more intriguing, especially if Notre Dame can hang on here. Big hit delivered by the running back, Kyron Williams, on the perimeter after a gain of close to eight. And, and I still think even, even with Trevor up next week, Dave, the way it's going to go is... After the game next week, you'll have a winner, you'll have a loser. If both teams go on to win the rest of their games, they would most likely meet in the ACC championship game, and, and then the winner there is probably going to be in, in great position, certainly to be in the, in the playoffs, maybe both, depending on how the games go. We'll see. Notre Dame dropped the spot in the polls. Flipping with Ohio State, which plays Penn State tonight on ABC. Here's third and three for Book. Finds a running lane. It picks up the first down and more into Georgia Tech territory. Scoots out of play at the 45. So here it is. 
again, this is what Andrew Thacker likes to do. Man coverage, he said, we're gonna, we're gonna get man on these guys. We don't wanna give them any space. Book sees that, has a place to escape up the middle, knows everybody has their eye on their receivers. And then the receivers turn into blockers. Ian Book has done that as he rises up the charts in Notre Dame history. For many of his quarterback numbers, his legs have been really impressive the way he prolongs plays. Here's a deep ball that's caught at the 20-yard line by McKinley. Inside the 15, Javon McKinley was targeted often in the first quarter by Ian Book on short passes. Here, Book goes deep to the 6-2 grad from Corona, California, gain of 31. And again, you see this back shoulder throw all the time. That's what it was. Back shoulder, even a little a little behind, but back, but it's supposed to be more to the back shoulder, but because the receiver is going to see the ball first, they make the break back for the ball, get the easy completion. Again, you get the 6'2", 215 pounder of the ball, he can make something happen with it. Now leading the team in catches with 13 on the season. Kyron Williams turns it upfield inside the 10, drags defenders inside the 5. Excellent run by Kyron Williams, second and short here for Notre Dame. You know, and, and that's what Ian Book, going back to the passing game, Dave, has had to do, get used to new receivers last year. Chase K uh, Claypool, Cole Komet, Chris Fink were all the top three leading receivers, all gone. Two of them in the NFL, two of 44 players Notre Dame has in the NFL, so it's all basically a new receiving group and always a tight end group as well. Get three tight ends that, as they run the ball straight ahead to Kyron Williams for the touchdown. It started with the takeaway on defense with Georgia Tech in position to get points. And the Irish march right down the field. And they score with Williams getting his sixth touchdown in the season on the ground. Nothing fancy at all. Nice job by Jared Patterson, the center, sustaining a block. But listen, go back to what Marty told Brian Kelly. Let's see what we do coming out this half. We need to stop on defense. Check. They got a turnover and got the ball. How does the offense do? Drive right down the field and score. Just the start they wanted. Dora puts it through. And Notre Dame leads by 17 in full command now of this ball game early in the third. Exploration. It's in our DNA. Trevor Lawrence today beating Boston College. It'll be DJ Uyunglele again at quarterback next week against these fighting Irish. Fourth ranked Notre Dame looking to go to 6 0. Touchback here. Georgia Tech will start on its 25 yard line. Saturday night football presented by Capital One. Number three, Ohio State in action against Penn State. ABC, ESPN app. Taking a look at the PlayStation 5 college football rankings. We mentioned that we got all the top five teams in action across the uh, ESPN networks today. See how Georgia Tech responds. Now down 17. Good pass by Sims to Sanders. Forward progress stopped after a pickup of close to nine. So this is what Jeff Collins will, will see, and I'm sure he told his, his club at halftime, we'll watch to see now. And he, and he thought that the culture of the team was starting to take shape to what he wanted when he saw them come back a bit against Boston College. Now, it fell short, but they came back, and he loved their attitude in coming back. So same test here against one of the top teams in the country. How do you respond to in a game that's getting away from you? Against one of the best defenses in the country, maybe the best defense. Sims keeping it here. Sweet move to shake Sean Crawford and pick up the first down for Georgia Tech. Yeah, this isn't going to be a game, wrestling game, where they just start throwing and throwing. They're going to try and run the regular offense and get this true freshman, Jeff Sims, a lot more snaps at just running a normal offense. Back to throw here. Sims looking deep. Had a man and overshot Malachi Carter. I don't know if Carter stopped his route or what, but both the quarterback and the receiver didn't look pleased with the other. And we'll see if he stopped. Just got hung up a little bit.
with Olosu Kamara. So just uh, 13 pass attempts for Sims in the game. True freshman who's a business administration major says he wants to play in the NFL for a long time and then open up his own business when his playing days are over. He is incredibly talented. Going to be fun to watch over the next few years. No shot here, though, to get away from Isaiah Foskey. Now has three and a half sacks on the year. He is freakish talent at that defensive end position for Notre Dame. So he's reading Foskey is what he's doing. And Foskey comes down seven. You'll see him right at the mesh point. Freeze it right here. At the mesh point, he sees him zeroing in on the back. So that's why he's going to pull it. But Foskey does a great job coming off and still making the play. That's a great athletic play by Foskey. He's reading Foskey the whole way, saying he thought he was going to crash more on the running back. And just going to hand it off here, and a great play to get off a block by Gundeji to make the tackle. It'll be fourth down. Again, this Notre Dame defense has given up just 56 points all season long. Georgia Tech, right around 100 yards of total offense on the day. Well, see, again, this is where you're, you're seeing athletic ability and team speed. Really, the, the level has really been upped over the last couple of years. Got a whistle, stoppage of play, a flag before the snap on the punt. Prior to the snap, false start, number four, kicking team, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. You know, growing pains for yeah. Jeff Collins trying to get this uh, program headed back in a positive direction. They did have some success under Paul Johnson, went to an Orange Bowl. Second year for Collins, three wins a year ago. Two wins already this year. And, and, and by the way, we just had a good look at the punter again. He's six foot 255. He's going to punt on Sundays. He hasn't had a banner day today, but he can boom the ball. Air catch made by Salerno near the 38 yard line, midway through the third quarter with Ungalale. Travis Etienne doesn't hurt to have him. Georgia. Knocked off Kentucky at a good game, 14-3 in Lexington. Later tonight on ESPN, number two will play. Alabama taking on Mississippi State. Got up to a great start, but no wins since week one. And then Ohio State-Penn State, terrific rivalry game on ABC following us. Brian Kelly's team dropped from three to four this past week with Ohio State moving up. Notre Dame will play Clemson, obviously, next Saturday night with no Trevor Lawrence because of COVID-19 protocols will not be able to play next week. Ian Book to the air here on first down as a completion to Skoranek for nine yards. Well, right, Dave, numbers for Bowie Angelale in his debut. I'm just so impressed you have the pronunciation down so well. But again, this kid is almost 6'5", about 250 pounds. Threw the ball well today. To the right, he threw it better than to the left. Had the tough exchange with Etienne down by the goal line. Boston College got a 97-yard fumble return for a touchdown. But all in all, a nice game for the true freshman. A lot will be on his shoulders next week. Book in trouble. And down he goes. First guy back there was Caleb Oliver for Georgia Tech. Third Third giving, giving up a couple of sacks today again. All the... All the, the movement starting left so he's untouched so that one's on on the quarterback he's got to see that either make a miss get rid of the ball but Oliver was on it pretty quickly so at times sometimes you just say you know what you got to eat it fight to live fight for another play third and eight see if Georgia Tech comes after book here they do Book gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. Trying to hit Davis. He might have been short of the line to gain anyway. As Wesley Walker was in coverage, fourth down. Yeah, even if he caught that, they weren't going to make it. That was good defense for Georgia Tech. Good win for that Georgia Tech defense. Something they needed. Put their offense back out on the field. Ezard is deep here for Georgia Tech. Don't know how many more possessions that uh, Georgia Tech is going to get, but... You'd have to think on this one coming up, got to get points. Get within two scores going into the fourth quarter. This hits Ezard. He's able to cover it up, though. 
Well, Georgia Tech wearing the throwback jerseys today to honor the Black Watch defense from the 1980s, which honored the Scottish, uh, Scottish military of the 1700s. Pat Swilling, uh, college football Hall of Famer, was a part of that defense. Ted Roof was also on that defense. I know you spoke with Bill Curry, who was the head coach for Georgia Tech during that time this week, Mike. There's Trey Swilling. Yes, I'm going to give you that story. Of course, Bill Curry has a story. And I'm not sure what happened yeah. because, again, I'm watching it off a TV monitor at home, but it looked like uh, there was a pass to Sanders. Our, our cameras got fooled there. Second down. So I'll start, the, pass play. I'll start the, the story, and, and we'll, we'll obviously stop it in place. Starts with Don Lindsay, who was the defensive coordinator at the time. Gibbs able to get the first down and out of bounds near the 40. Go ahead, Mike. So Don Lindsay was the defensive coordinator, Bill Curry the head coach, and Don had said, I want to do, I want to get a name for some of the players on the defense. It's not all of them, but some of the players. And they didn't have a name, and Bill Curry's better half, his wife Carolyn, always liked to take Bill overseas to learn things in the offseason. And one of the trips they took was to Scotland as a first and ten play here for Sims. Sims. As a wide open man, Jalen Cap into Notre Dame territory. Tech has something going on this drive. Nice drive so far here by Georgia Tech. So Bill and his wife Carolyn are at the Edinburgh Castle in, in Scotland, and they're walking up to the front, and Bill sees this huge guys in kilts, huge calves that look like or calves that look like thighs, and these big daggers, knives. And he said, Who are these guys? And he was told they're the black watchmen. And and, and Bill, as we see another completion, Bill called Don Lindsay at that point, and he said, I've got the name. This is what we're calling those guys on defense of the famed Black Watch defense. Ted Roof was the first one. He brought in Pat Swilling, and then the players who were in the Black Watch, they had to vote in the other players. As they review this play, they said they, there was never more than seven. The previous play is under further review for potential targeting. All right, we'll, we'll get the review on that. We'll check it out. This is a penalty on yep. Notre Dame. It would be an ejection and a 15-yard penalty. Got a timeout, 5-12 to go in the third. Georgia Tech starting to move the football, really, for the first time today. We are heading towards the 2020 presidential election. How to ensure your vote counts. Because of COVID-19. 15 yard penalty against Notre Dame. So Georgia Tech with its best field position of the day at the 25 of Notre Dame. Sims throwing it to the end zone incomplete. He was going for Leonard. Nick McLeod with excellent coverage. So here's the, the penalty, and, and it was it was targeting. He comes in there. You got to use your shoulder. Got to keep your head out of that play. He had time to do that. Look where he's coming in. He catches him with the, his helmet into the helmet of the, the runner. That was the call. He'll miss the first half of next week's game against Clemson. He plays a position, the buck position, where basically three players have been playing that position by committee. Gibbs in trouble in the backfield, able to make a defender miss, and then look at him run over Kyle Hamilton. Close to a first down. That was an outstanding run. Maybe the best of the day for freshman Jameer Gibbs. So, you know, we see glimpses, and we saw just a little move in east and west to give himself that hole to go north and south. Glimpses of these freshmen help as we get a Dalen Hayes, another sack fumble. But recovered by an offensive lineman for Georgia Tech. Dalen Hayes this time coming from the other other side off of Zach Quinney, number 73, coming on the outside up top. Quinney gets his hands around the head and tries to push him down to the ground. Dalen Hayes keeps his balance, gets his second sack fumble, forced fumble of the game. But well, that was an important recovery, though, by yes. Quinney to keep hopes alive of at least getting something. You've got to get points on this drive. You've, you've gotten this far into Notre Dame territory. It's the first time they've been in the red zone today. Second and 16. Now, keep in mind, their field goal kickers, though, one of five, four blocks. Here's Sims keeping it. And down he goes after a short gain. So it's going to be third down and 14 here. 
for the Yellow Jackets. Again, third and manageable. That's that's a phrase we have not been able to say about this offense an awful lot. Nice play there, pulled the ball, held it in patience long enough to make the defender commit to get a decent gain, but when you're backed up that much, it gets very, very difficult. Just look at Jeff Collins, the, the intensity. Yeah. He never stops, <laughs> bouncing up and down. Guy's got incredible amount of energy on that sideline for Georgia Tech. Sims rolling out here in third and 14 and taken down in the backfield by Sean Crawford. Not sure what was going on there with the play design, but it's another negative play and now a long field goal try. Well, Jordan Mason's right there to make the play number 27 and Crawford just a nice shuffle move around him to make the play. Very, very he difficult. Make the play. Dalen Hayes would have. A exactly. Yeah. I mean, this this defense is just playing so well. They're playing in, in Georgia Tech's backfield pretty much the entire day. So Jude Kelly, only one made field goal for Georgia Tech, and it was a 32-yarder. Oh. This from 44 yards, and it's not close. Wow, one of six combined on field goal attempts for Georgia Tech. A pair of true freshman kickers. Taco Bell's Nachos Party Pack. Delicious nachos topped with all your favorites. Only at Taco Bell. So, Dave, I think, you know, Jeff Collins, the message, as he said, because he has so many young players, not, not to scream and yell, but to really be constructive criticism. He doesn't want to lose these guys. He doesn't want them thinking, if I make a mistake, am I going to get pulled or not? So there's a lot of, lot of coaching going on with a young crew here. Not only physically mistakes being made, but mentally as well when games get away. A run, Kyron Williams on first down, and he's going to lose a couple brought down by David Curry. Let's bring in Marty Smith. Guys, we can tell that Notre Dame is superior athletically in their size and all of that. And in speaking with Coach Collins about the culture he's building at Georgia Tech, he understands that. He has so much energy, as you guys were alluding to a moment ago, and he told us this was interesting. They're scared to death around this country of what we will be. We're not there yet, but it's coming. He's confident, boys. Yeah, you know, when you hear that as Kyron Williams gets the carry for a couple yards, bringing up third down and long, you know, at some point, you have to have some evidence to back that up. And as you look at his track record, he does, yes. right? I mean, his, his record as a coordinator is there to at least get the players to believe it. As my son would say, he has the receipts. He is, uh, you know, trying to talk like the kids, you know. He has the receipts out there. And I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. This was a triple option team two years ago. The makeup is completely different of what he's going for. So it is going to take some time. Book on third down and eight. Flushed out of the pocket. Launches it complete for a first down to Javon McKinley, who is tearing up this Georgia Tech defense today. McKinley takes it into Yellow Jacket territory as they convert on third and long. There has been great consistency in the passing game. We've seen Book do this and take off, but he sees Curry's right there, so he just buys time by shuffling. All his receivers know it. Break off their routes. Watch McKinley's doing an out route, but sees his man scrambling, knows he can't go outside anymore, so breaks back to the inside to give him an open look. 34-yard pass play, Book in trouble here, sensing the pressure coming from Curry, and he completes it. You know, just watching that compared to what we saw from Jeff Sims, that, that's an experience thing, right? You sense the pressure, yes. you just move enough to keep the play alive. You buy, buy time to keep the play alive, absolutely right. Again, he can run to do some things, rather stay behind the line of scrimmage and throw it to his playmakers, knows when it's man coverage, he'll have more room to run. But Sims is gonna get there from Georgia Tech. I, I really think the upside is so high for some of those guys on that offensive side of the ball. He's got some defenders, some DN, 6'6", 6'4", 300 pounders. Those are the guys, true freshmen. Those are the kind of guys he wants to start bringing in. On second and six, he'll dump it off here to Williams. First down, down the sideline, inside the 15, finally planted at the 13-yard line by oh. Anthony Showell. <laughs> the big man. Robert Hainsey, 27 starts. What a great job keeping his feet 
the 290 pounder not one block but two blocks downfield to help free up his man as we head to the fourth quarter Notre Dame up 24 just one win Notre Dame on the doorstep again, leading Georgia Tech 24-7. The Irish 5-0, ranked fourth. They play Clemson next Saturday night. Trevor Lawrence will not play, though, for Clemson. Here's Sebo Flemister running right on first down. Got maybe two yards there for the Irish. Yeah, it's going to make it very interesting next week. That's, you know, the, the freshman quarterback at Clemson getting that, that game today against Boston College in a game that was a lot closer than people thought. I'm sure Dabo is very happy, at least if he's going to play next week, got the experience today. He got a lot of snaps under his belt before having to go to South Bend and play. DJ Uyunglele, the quarterback for Clemson. Flemister again, draws inside the 10 by Quez Jackson. You know, we talked a lot, Mike, about Ian Book and the record. Going to go to 26-3 and three as a starting quarterback, two-time captain. Statistically, among the all-time greats yes. at Notre Dame at quarterback, but winning big games. And it's not just on him, but obviously everybody's going to yeah. look at him when it comes to trying to win a big game. Yeah, that's exactly right. You're going to look at the quarterback in those big games to come up with that big play. And that's, that's the next step because that's where Notre Dame has struggled at times against the better teams getting that play. Lemister dragging defenders will have a first down. First down and goal from the four-yard line. But it really is amazing the where he is. I mean, it's the first time since Jimmy Clausen. You know, they had a quarterback with this many starts coming back for a third season to play. And he says some of the fun part, he doesn't get hooked up, caught up in all the records, you know, that, that he's where he's moving up the charts, where Brady Quinn is atop most of the, the charts for most of them. But he is enjoying passing uh, his offensive coordinator, Tommy Reese. In more than a few of them over the last couple of weeks, he's passed Tommy Reese in some of the statistics, and he's sure to, always sure to let Tommy know that. <laughs> They have a great relationship. They're about the same age. Reese yeah, is only yeah. yeah Reese is only six years older than Book. First and goal. Flemister again, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Sebo Flemister. A homecoming for Sebo Flemister, one-time Georgia Tech commit from Williamson, Georgia, three yards out. Nothing fancy in this game when they get by the goal line. Big bodies. Pushing defenders around, leaning on them. Scores have been very, very easy right up the middle. So what Brian Kelly was looking for out of this team in the second half, he's getting without question. They're, they're upping their performance. Hey, maybe this is a reason why Brian Kelly can say, you know what, we are going to look ahead because he feels comfortable in the professionalism, so to speak, of his players and how they handle their business, which they have certainly done here today. Notre Dame leads Georgia Tech 31-7. The defense has surrendered zero points. The only score for Georgia Tech on a 93-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Walton. Dante Smith is deep. And the fair catch made. Come on to the 25. Let's take a look at today's crunch time brought to you by Cheez It. Oh, love me some Cheez It. Okay, sorry. Uh, listen, this defense holding Georgia Tech right now to 141 total yards. They have four sacks. Coming into this game, Georgia Tech was allowing 1.67 sacks per game. That was tops in the ACC. Notre Dame has four sacks today. So they are continuing to dominate like they have all year long. First down and 10 on the 25, and Sims to the air, off play action. Has a completion out near the 40-yard line to Ezzard. You know, speaking of, of food, Mike, you started this day with two buckets of candy. Where, where are we now? Where, where are we in the count? We have three quarters of one bucket left. Oh I'm a little wound up now, Dave, okay? <laughs> I'm a little wound up. <laughs> Sims to throw again. Takes off instead. Crosses the 40-yard line. Lost the ball. They got it back. It was Malachi Carter hopping on the loose ball. Again, that's... <laughs> In a game that is getting away from them, still, as I've talked about, Jeff Collins watching the players and seeing how they respond, both offensively and defensively. 
Salon on it. Since his knee was down, I don't think that would, would have been considered a fumble had Notre Dame got it. Pressure off the edge. Sims steps up, throws a deep ball, and overshoots. Carter incomplete. All right, so we, we were talking about all the candy that Mike has already consumed. Yep. Uh, Marty, Mike, and I were asked uh, our top four. Uh, I'll let you go here, Mike, but first of all, number two for me was not Cracker Jack. It was Caramel Corn. Cracker Jack and Caramel Corn are different. Can I just say my list is awesome, and what are you guys doing? Twizzlers? Nerds, Marty? Nerds and sweet tarts? Those are the things that are, I like them, but they're not the go-to. Those are the things that are left over in the bowl after you've picked through the Twix and the Kit Kats and the Hershey bars. Holy smokes, Marty. I got to have a word with you. Here's Sims on third down and six. And it's incomplete through the hands of Sanders. Marty, explain yourself. Uh, first of all, nerves have staying power, okay? You're not taking two bites of the Twix and it's over. But to be quite frank, this is completely overthought. The, the list, it, it begins and ends with the Reese Cup. The Reese Cup is like the Notre Dame of candy. All it does is win and win and win, right? It's just, I, 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 the Reese Cup blizzard from Dairy Queen, just for the record, is the greatest dessert, but that's a whole other debate. I, 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 well, well, then, the, Dave, I don't understand what Marty's doing. He said the Reese Cup, he had it fourth. <laughs> I know. I don't understand. <laughs> the big sell, but he yeah. had it at the bottom yeah. of his list. He did. And it will be a touchback. I, I prefer just a, a glass of red usually on Halloween night as opposed to the candy. So you know, I, I was just trying off the top of my head that the first thing that came to mind was Twizzlers. Yeah. So cute. Notre Dame with a first and 10, leading 31-7, and Book looking to take a shot, but everybody covered. Now Book unloads deep through the hands of the intended receiver, Joe Wilkins, incomplete. So, Mike, I don't know if you saw this on Twitter. I, I tweeted out yesterday a sign, and it, you can get up close and see it. Basically, it just says, there you go. This is not a trick. I'm on television right now. Please don't ring the doorbell. My office is literally right next to the, the front door. So if they rang so the doorbell, said, we would hear it on air. You would, yes. Well, did you yes. leave out a bowl of candy for him, for everybody? There's like 10 out there, and they're all gone. 10? Ten, ten, 10 pieces of candy? It's 315 out here I have in Arizona. I have 362 pieces of candy on my front porch right now for kids. Tyree trying to get outside. Can't. Maybe a yard. Brought down by Quest Jackson. So I do think that this is going to be that conversation with, with Brian Kelly, as, as Marty talked about in the beginning of the telecast, about performance over outcome and getting the performance that raises the level. He wanted the level raised. I still don't think it's where he wants it to be. You see a mistake here or there, but obviously it's not going to be a perfect game. But I do think it's going, for starting from Pittsburgh last week, what they did to here, it is definitely going the direction Brian wants. Third and nine here for Book from the 21. Book completes it to Mayer. He will not get the first down. Notre Dame will have to punt. Guys, don't you think that, that Brian Kelly trusts the leadership of his team, that he can talk yes. about looking big picture? Without a doubt. He has leaders all over this team, and those guys are controlling the locker room and the field. And here's a guy, quite honestly, Michael Mayer, the, the, the true freshman tight end. They said this, this kid is like a 10-year vet. They said he fits right in with the upperclassmen on the team. He came into this game as a leading receiver at tight end U. This guy is, is going to just have a fantastic career and will be the next level as well at some point. So, yes, they have, they have great leadership, Dave. Uh, you're going to have to call the play here, Mike, because I, I completely lost uh, everything here. <laughs> so, I guess we're going to break. I got we'll you. have a chance maybe to get it fixed here. Plug it back I in. See blank screen. <laughs> we're the most trusted credit union owned by members of the military community. And for...
Don't forget to vote on Election Day, November 3rd. For more information, visit IamAVoter.com. Well, there's, there's Jeff Collins again. He's going to be volunteering at a polling station. We're back in Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Has the ball trailing 31-7 to Notre Dame. Working on some issues with Dave to get him back on the air. You know, Mike, we're back, but I, I wanted to let you call that play. But oh, we did. are back. I have, uh, I, I, I the think, monitor working now, so we're good. I think people might have thought me having being a Notre Dame person that I may have kicked your plug out or something somehow, some way, so I could just take over the game. But, but that, that, that's great by Jeff Collins again, volunteering at polling stations. We're seeing a lot of schools and giving the student athletes a day off next Tuesday to vote. Here's Gibbs. Gets about five on second down at 10. So again, third down here for Georgia Tech, third and five. And, and right now, Jeff Collins will be looking at little victories. Third and five, let's try and move the chains. Let's try and get some kind of drive going. As we've been re reiterating throughout, this is a true freshman quarterback, a true freshman running back, a true freshman right tackle. Sims, wide open, out of the backfield is Gibbs. Inside the 35 of Notre Dame, again, the Irish has not allowed a point off uh, from the Georgia Tech offense today and wants to keep that going here. Gibbs now 19 receptions on the year. That's that's the running back of today. A guy that can run the ball and be a threat out of the backfield as well. And that's exactly what this freshman is. From Dalton, Georgia, 19th catch. Averages over 60 rushing yards per game. No fresh set of downs and a design run here for Jeff Sims. Nice move by Sims to get the first down and then wisely dives as we go to Kevin Agandhi in the studio. Dave, time now for a protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate. We'll take a look at a great touchdown play. Boise State, their first play from scrimmage. Taking on Air Force, USC transfer Jack Sears now at Boise State. 75 yards to C.T. Thomas was squared away, seven apiece. Seven, and a jump ball pass into the end zone is broken up by Hamilton, intended for McCollum. Yeah, that's a that's a a safety who is 6'4", so he actually had the advantage there in the jump ball, along with great coverage. Hamilton, a, again, a true sophomore. He's been nicked up a little bit. Says, you know, he still has some ankle issues every now and then, but really, really savvy in that defensive backfield. Jordan Mason gets the carry here. Stiff arming his way inside the 10, inside the 5. First and goal for Georgia Tech. Yellow Jackets may not win this game, but at least maybe get some confidence offensively going into next week. Again, there's your, as they have said, Georgia Tech, your downhill runner gets a nice stiff arm. A nice drive for Georgia Tech. Mason plows forward, comes up just short of the end zone. Second and goal. Jeff is going to like the attitude right now that he's seeing out of his players. Mason gets it again. And pushed into the end zone for the touchdown. It's a nice push up front. You'll see him go, and then you see a lineman just start push right behind him, which is legal. You can't do that. Those are former defensive player, not ecstatic that you could do that, but take advantage of it as they did a good drive. Georgia Tech put together in a game that is for all intent purposes over for them, but it's a way to show some life, some spirit, and get a good drive. Going for two here. This would make it a two-score game if they're able to convert here on the two-point play, get it down to 16 points. Gonna have to burn a timeout there with a play clock down to one. Three timeouts remaining for Georgia Tech. While we have a moment here, let's uh, do the Affleck trivia question. 
Heisman Trophy is named after former Georgia Tech football coach John Heisman. Three schools are tied for the most Heisman's won with seven. Can you name them? And Mike, I can almost guarantee that you can name one of the three. Um, Notre Dame. See, now the other two. That's get the other two. I was the king of partial credit. <laughs> Uh, USC? Um, is that a yeah, question or an, or an answer? Were you asking me or is that your final answer? Well, it depends on when we see the final answer. If it's up there, then yes, it was part of my answer, which would give me 66%, which I know is not an A, but... It well, that's why I asked if it was a question or your answer, because if it, if it was the answer, it was wrong. <sighs> Two-point conversion. Here's a pitch to Sanders on the end around, and boy, Kyle Hamilton throws him down to end that. There remains an 18-point lead for Notre Dame. Oh, can we stop? It's my home of the college football playoff. First offensive touchdown of the day for Georgia Tech, but Notre Dame still in full command. Going to go to 6-0, playing Clemson, which will be without Trevor Lawrence at quarterback in South Bend next Saturday. That's a big story. Uh, apparently, also on social media, Marty and I are getting ripped for our candy picks. As well, Again, though, you should. You should. It, it, it's awful as we get ready for an onside kick here. But, it, but again, Georgia Cracker Jack, Tech. I didn't say Cracker Jack. It was Caramel Corn. Either Cracker way. Jack and Caramel Corn are not the same thing. Yeah, they're so bad. Loose ball. Notre Dame had a chance at it. Went right through the hands of Kyron Williams. And Georgia Tech has it at the 43-yard line. Recovered by Curry for the Yellow Jackets. So that was an excellent kick. As it was rolling, remember, the kicking team can't get after it until 10 yards. But the receiving team can. Kyron Williams came up and tried to recover that at about seven or eight yards when only the receiving team could do it. He stepped up to make the play and it bounced right off his chest plate. Excellent kick. And then that's what you have to do. You have to hope that somebody has a miscue on the other team and they did. And by the way, if you're looking for feathers in the cap for Georgia Tech, that's certainly one of them. That scoring drive they just had, the first time Notre Dame has been scored on in the fourth quarter this year. Sims dumps it off to Gibbs, able to break a tackle. And Gibbs picks up the first down. Boy, that failed two-point play. If Georgia Tech were to score on this drive, that failed two-point play could end up being huge because it would have made it a two-score game. Still got to convert a couple of two-point plays. But if nothing else, Georgia Tech building for the future here. To, to your point, too, Dave, I mean, this, this defense, Notre Dame defense, they've been playing great all game, and now... Letting the touchdown drive go, letting the start of the drive starting well there for Georgia Tech. The previous play is under further review for potential targeting. Oh, okay, boy. we had replay create targeting earlier and may happen here as well. A hit by Kurt Heinisch, we're being told, on the quarterback Jeff Sims is going to be reviewed here, initiated from the booth. Uh, no way that'll be targeting. So that, that that won't be targeting. Notre Dame has already had a player, Maris Leofau, who has been disqualified from the game, will miss the first half of next week's game. You see his helmet, he plants it right in the chest. Now, will it be, well, I shouldn't say that won't be targeting because it was a quarterback throwing the ball. Did he drop it with the crown of his helmet? I know he didn't hit the head. Right, but it, but I, I I didn't see the drop of the crown of the helmet or, or, or I, I didn't or the either. Attack. I didn't either. I, I I completely agree. I do not believe this is going to be targeted. And boy, if that's targeting, yeah. how, how do you hit a quarterback? I, I, I'm with you. I mean, I, it certainly he didn't drop his head all the way down. It looked like he put his face mask into the chest. This could be big if they do rule it targeting because you talked about Leah Fowl missing the first half next week and yep. now it would be Heinish missing the first half of the Clemson yep. game next week. After further review, there is no targeting yep. on the play. First down. You know, 
whether yeah whether they you talked about with the crown of the helmet it wasn't if it if it's a defensive player is the attack at the head or neck area it wasn't nothing met the criteria there for targeting First down at the Notre Dame 42. Pressure off the edge here. The blitz is picked up. Sims in trouble and sack, though. A flag is down. Adi Ogundeji with the sack there for Notre Dame. A captain at two coming into today. And that's this play will stand. Yep, holding on Georgia Tech, the fifth sack of holding. the day. Number 57, offense. Penalties decline. Second down. A guy the coaches have said. And Ogundeji that has kind of played in the shadows of other stars. You see some of the stars on that defense. He's kind of been in the shadows guy, but is a leader, a captain, as you mentioned. Two sacks against Florida State. And a nice edge rush there. Graduate student from the Detroit area, West Bloomfield, Michigan. On second and 14, Sims. Throws it over the head of the intended receiver, McCollum, who was open, but there was a lot of pressure on Sims. Let's answer the Affleck trivia question. Notre you said Notre Dame, Ohio USC, State, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay, you got it. You got it. Yes! Eventually. Okay, how about that? And nobody told me. Maybe. <laughs> you, you had eight minutes to think about it because we, we teased that with the question, and you had thrown out USC. Uh, Dave, I'm just going to flat out ask you, are you saying I cheated? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Again, you had eight minutes to look it up. I, I can either, I, let me just say this. I did not look it up. That's the truth. But does that mean you also... Uh, weren't texted the answer from okay so that friend. You know. was there a phone a friend or a text a friend involved that's why i love my wife <laughs> <laughs> georgia tech going <laughs> forward here on fourth down and 14 in notre dame territory wow. and sims got hit the ball came out it's ruled a fumble it's picked up by sean crawford taking it back inside the 25 yard line Wow. Dalen Hayes had pressure. Hard to tell if it was a fumble or if the hand was going forward, but the ruling in the field is a fumble. And Crawford with the run back of some 30 yards. Another outside ruling rush. on the field is a fumble recovery by Notre Dame. Another outside rush on Jordan Williams. So I, I think that's going to be an incomplete pass. If it was a forced fumble, it would have been his third sack. Let's see if his arm is going forward. Yeah, the previous I, play yeah. was under further review. That's going to be an incomplete pass. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident it's going to be that way. I agree, unless you can't tell if the ball was starting to come out of the hand on the hit by Hayes. That would be the only thing if the ball started to move and it came out of the hand. And therefore, he didn't really have possession as the hand came forward. But I, I'm with you. It, it looked to me like it was a forward pass. Dalen Hayes having himself a rushing pass rushing day to day yeah. that seemed pretty clear though to be a forward pass yes, without it a good overturn all right a pacific life game summary with notre dame in command about to go to six and oh on the season book not spectacular, but pretty darn good. Efficient. The defense was spectacular again today for Notre Dame. Yeah, this defense has been fantastic. It really kind of reminds me a little bit, Dave, again, in 2012 when Notre Dame was undefeated, played for the title. I my, my two sons on the team then. That was a defensive-led team as well. The offense for a while was averaging over 200 yards rushing and 200 yards passing, just like this offense is doing right now, 207 passing and 231, I believe it is, rushing. You see that at this point they're under 200 yards passing. I see the similarities there, but this, Everett Golston was the quarterback then. Ian Book's a better passer. After further review, it was determined that it was an incomplete pass. It will still be first down for Notre Dame. The ball will be placed at the 46-yard line in the left half. First and two. Set, please set the clock. 538. So, so I look at those comparisons with Golston 
and the way he is a quarterback, you know, Golson could run well. He was a better thrower and runs well. And Tommy Reese, the old coordinator now, was kind of the out of the bullpen guy that year that came in and, and definitely saved more than a few games for Notre Dame. But but it was definitely a defensive led a team like this one is. Though that 2012 team and this team both run the ball extremely well. Notre Dame just going to keep it on the ground here with five and a half to go. Flemister being pushed to the perimeter and thrown out of bounds by Caleb Oliver. You, you talked about Tommy Reese. I think this is really interesting, right? Going into this Clemson game next week, you have a 28-year-old, first year as an offensive coordinator. He's been on staff for only three years, uh, was a grad assistant at Northwestern, one year with the Chargers with uh, Mike McCoy, Ken Wisen, and John McNulty, who's now on the Notre Dame staff as a tight ends coach. Brian Kelly told us he wanted the quarterback coach to become the offensive coordinator, so Tommy already had a leg up on the competition. But this will be really interesting to watch the play con, I think, next week against the Clemson defense. On second and nine, they'll keep it on the ground. Flemish are able to break a tackle and get maybe two. You know, and along those lines, as you mentioned, you wanted the quarterback to be the OC. And while it wasn't publicly said, it was that uh, that little camping bowl in Orlando against Iowa State at the end of last year that was kind of Tommy's audition. He was calling the plays there, and that was the audition that helped get him this job. And he did say when he was with the Chargers, he said he was absolutely humbled and learning so much more about the game of football and the depth that he needed to, to go in knowledge of the game to help him. He said it was immeasurable how much it helped him because he has not been a coach for a long time. But, you know, obviously played the quarterback position for a long time in Notre Dame, picked up great experience there, and is doing an excellent job. And I agree with you as flag on the play and a tackle behind the line for Georgia Tech. Big test next week for his play calling in this Legal offense. Substitution. Next week. Defense. 12 players on the field at the snap. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. And, and again, you know, the loser of the game next week isn't out of it no. because the, the top two teams in the standings with no divisions this year in the ACC will play for the ACC championship on December 19th. Obviously, the winner has a huge leg up on anybody else in the conference. And maybe anybody else in the country. It'll probably be the best win this season. You can make the argument Alabama against Georgia versus that, but whoever wins next week, even though Lawrence isn't going to play, it might be the best win in college football this year for whoever comes out of there with a victory. Timeout, Notre Dame. First timeout of this they have. 30 second timeout. All right, let's take a look at the family of Georgia Tech's Tariq Carpenter as we honor those who serve, brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Tariq's mother, Demetria Fiffy, is a retired staff sergeant from the Army. She was deployed in Kuwait, Iraq, and Afghanistan in the early 2000s. And Tariq honors his mother's service by finding a person in uniform pregame and shaking their hand. Obviously a little bit harder to do here yeah. with COVID-19 going on, but always looking for ways to honor his mother. Uh, who is uh, faithfully serving this country now for two decades. Listen, we cannot honor the men and women who serve our country enough. I mean, it should be, it should be way more than we do, no doubt about it, for what they, what they do and what they sacrifice for us. We can't thank you enough. Carpenter, a senior, at his final year at Georgia Tech. Notre Dame leading by 18, 3.34 to go. Third down and two. That game next Saturday will be in South Bend. It'll be 12 straight wins for Notre Dame, the longest active streak in college football as they get the first down here with Flemister to keep this drive going. Notre Dame has also won 22 in a row at home, and Clemson has won 39 consecutive regular season games. Look, another interesting note, Brian Kelly told us this. He said in his in, in tenure at Notre Dame, his 11th year right now, he's, they've never had a top 10 team come to Notre Dame and play. I did, hadn't even realized that. They played them all when they've been on the road. Yeah, I could have sworn that Georgia yeah, you know, was I top thought. five a couple years ago when they, when they went into South Bend. As uh, Flemister here, able to shake a tackle and get the first down. 
up to the 20 yard line. So we just found out before the third quarter started that Trevor Lawrence will not play against Notre Dame. Here is Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney. Uh, Trevor will not be able to play. Just want to go ahead and get that out there. He's doing well, but obviously we have there's a protocol in place, and so it is, he will be out in time to play. But then you have the cardiac part of it that you have to kind of ramp back up. And even if he feels great and, and could, could probably go play, you know, he, he's not allowed to do that simply because of the protocol that's in place. Offline number 94, five-yard penalty, still first down. The, the, the cardiac protocol following the 10-day right. the isolation period. It, it is possible, though, that uh, Trevor Lawrence could travel, but he would not have gone through all the necessary steps to be eligible to return and play in the game. And I think Dabo would love to travel him if he could, if it was safe. It was if it, safe for everybody to help the young quarterback who's going to be playing. Here's Book on first and five taking off. Stays in bounds and picks up the first down. Ohio State, Penn State coming up later tonight on ABC. These are some of the impact games that should impact uh, the college football playoff standings. We're still almost a month away from the first uh, rankings from the college football playoff committee. I think what's going to be really interesting for the committee, considering their decisions are based on the best teams. They pick the best four. Right. How do you gauge Clemson if they were to lose without Trevor Lawrence next week and they end up just one loss on the season? Well, Clemson uh, tackled for a loss here. That, that's why I think even the loser of next week's game, if they were to win then the ACC championship, I still think they, they would be in the final four. And if it's possible, if the games are close either way and they split, could both teams possibly get in? So I, I, I do not think the loser of next week's game by any means is going to be out. I think they still will have a, an excellent shot to be in the ACC title game if they were to go with the rest of the way. Notre Dame still has to play, obviously, Clemson and North Carolina, who puts up a ton of points uh, as well. So still a ways right, to go. Yeah, I mean, that game's in Chapel Hill Thanksgiving weekend. You know, Boston College, it's a road game for Notre Dame. The, the Eagles have, have shown that they can play with the best teams in the country. Plumas are breaking tackles. Come up just short of the goal line here. See if Notre Dame runs another play or not here with 30 seconds to go. So my, my last note to you, Dave, and everybody is this is now the 17th time Notre Dame has played on Notre Dame on, on Halloween, and they will be 17 and 0 going all the way back to their first game on Halloween in 1896 against Albion College in that hard-fought game that I watched tape of. They are 17-0 17, <laughs> 17 on Halloween, 13-0 since uh, the AP poll was instituted in 1936. That's all I got there. That's pretty good. That's probably the best thing you said all day. 6-0 oh. on the year now for Notre Dame and 12 straight wins, the longest active win streak in FBS since a loss at Michigan Halloween week of last year. It'll be Notre Dame and Clemson. Top five showdown in South Bend next Saturday. Thirty-one thirteen, the final score. I hope you've enjoyed watching the ACC on ESPN. Coming up here in about thirty.